Hey everybody, uh, this video I'm going to do, I want to make a warning about. Don't do this at home unless you really, really know what you're doing, okay? Because I've been asked this video probably the most is, why does a LiPo catch on fire sometimes when charging and other times it doesn't? And I am not saying what I'm, how do I say this? I need to put some kind of disclaimer. This is from my testing experience and I believe I'm about 99% right. There may be other reasons that you might set your own LiPo on fire, but in my testing, this is how I've set LiPos on fire. Now, it's winter here, 10 inches of snow outside, 15 degrees, so I'm not gonna do this in my garage where I set a LiPo on fire, but I'm gonna give you the conditions and show some testing and some, uh, I think you'll understand once you watch this whole video, but please don't do this at home unless you absolutely know what you're doing, okay? So what we're gonna do here is I've got my tester. If you don't know what this is, this is a tester that I designed to put heavy loads on batteries to be able to measure internal resistance and see what's going on. So hopefully right now over here, you're seeing one of my cells plugged in. This is a good cell. I balance the cells at 16, 15, 14. Well, actually, I forgot to start recording over there, so it's recording. Okay, now you will see over here, 15, 15, 14, 14. That's the voltage, it's, it's 4.16, um, 4 4.15, 4.14, 4.15, and the, the 1, 5, 1, 6 is flickering a little bit. Now, when I plug this in, you're going to see what the voltage of the battery is right now, and you see there's no load on it. So I'm around 16.48 right now. And what we're gonna do here, as I just move my camera a little bit. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna put different loads on a good battery and you're gonna watch how the voltage drops and how it drops evenly. Then I'm gonna take a bad battery and show you what happens when I identify a bad cell. And then I'll explain to you how that bad cell will lead to a fire if you're not charging your battery right, okay? So what I'm gonna do right now is throw on a little bit of a load here. And as you can see, it's 258-ish watts. It pulled me down to about 15.75 volts. And if you notice, each of my, my cells went down to about 4.1 or 4.2 as an average, okay? So I'm gonna write that down. I'm at 254 and it pulled me down to 4. Point, basically 01 right now. So let me turn that off. Now watch the, the cells recover and they'll go back up probably to 1.2 or 1.3 because I didn't really take hardly any milliamps out of it. And yeah, they're gonna go back to about 4.12. So they're gonna go back to 4.12. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a huge load and you're going to get to see I shouldn't say huge load. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really up the load on it. Okay, so that looks like it's all right. We're all good there. We're recovering uh, almost up to 4.13. So when I put this load on that battery, I am putting 760-ish watts. I'm pulling my voltage down to the 3.7s, uh, five-ish. Okay, and that's under, and that's at 32 amps. Well, I didn't write down the other amps, but that's 700 and you can see the watts coming down. So as I unplug this now, watch how the cells recover. And they'll probably go back up to 4.1 or 4.05 or something like that, given some time. Now, what I've been doing over here with this battery that's bad is I've been balancing all the cells with a balanced charger and you should see something popping in over here, maybe down here, you'll see one cell goes to 4.20, but the other ones aren't getting there. That tells me right there, something's wrong with that battery. They should all be very even when you're charging. Where this is dangerous is if I wasn't charging it in a balanced mode, it would be try taking those lower cells up to 4.2 to get to the the total voltage of the pack. So a four cell pack, uh, a four cell pack should be 16.8 volts when it's fully charged, okay? 16.8.
So if you're not doing a balanced charge and you have one cell at 4.2, one at 4.10, 4.12, 4.15. Those other three cells are doing everything to get topped up to 16.8 volts. Those cells will get hot enough that over time they can start a fire because your, your charger is pushing amperage into that battery that cannot reach the 16.8 volts. That's the reason it's paramount that you balance charge quite often. I balance charge just about every flight. It takes longer. Um, I also have the little uh, Hobby King thing you see in the right hand side right here that will balance my, uh, uh, you can actually press this little button right here and it will balance them all the time. So normally when I pull a pack off my charger, I'll plug it into that Hobby King thing there and I'll balance all the cells at like 4.18 or 4.19. If it's a brand new good pack where all the cells are 4.2 and one's at 4.9, I'll still balance them down to 4.19. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So what we're gonna do now is take this bad cell because right now if I put this bad cell on a charger not balancing charging it would catch on fire so what we're going to see now and let me see if I can this is all jury rig right now everybody so I'm trying to do this just for the video so we're taking the good cell out and I don't think you can see it but this good cell is not has not there's no swelling to it at all this one swelled some the reason I found out this was going bad is when I took the internal resistance and saw that one, um, basically I was charging it and you know I look at all my batteries having personalities and when it was charging, they weren't charging even at all. So I did the internal resistance and one of my cells was at 30 and the other ones were like all over the place and I knew, okay, I got a bad cell, which means it goes to testing. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna plug this in. Let me make sure everything's still recording. Get everything centered up here. Uh, that's unplugged. So what we're gonna do first here is just get it plugged into the system. And you're going to see that it is at 16.1, which means it's definitely not a fully charged battery. We see that the cells are at 405, 405, 406, and 406, and that's the best I could get it balanced with my little balancer because my charger took one cell to 4.2, and the other ones wouldn't come up unless I let it charge for like three hours. They may never get there because the balanced charger is always going to keep me safe. Okay, If it's not balanced, it would catch on fire. So what I'm going to do is set this back up so I have a small load on it or, or a, a less of a load on it. do okay so now what watch what happens to these cells when I put even a small load on it see that one go to a 3.72 already 3.71 3.7 3.69 it's diving 3.67 so it got down to 3.67 keep in mind below 3.7 is not good on the cell so we know that that number four cell is a bad cell, but look what happened here. They all recovered almost the same. So when you plug something in like this little meter here, you think you've got a decent battery, but it's not. So now let's put a load under it and watch what happens. It's quite incredible. Okay, now when I put this load on it, I am guessing we could get down into the two point something volts on that that cell I don't know. let's see what happens yep that, that's full so let's see what happens to cell number four we're at 3.10 3.6 actually the other ones are diving bow oh, 2.9 2.8 2.6 2.4 see that cell is gar oh my god 1.8 that cell is garbage I want to make sure I'm not getting anything warm here Oh, yep, the cells, oh, sheesh. Um, so it got, to, oh, it got down to 0.05. Oh, and, and cell number four is really, really hot. So it's all, but look, you see, it's all recovering almost to normal. I'm going to run that test again here. I do not want to set this. I've never had one go on fire from putting a load on it. I've only had them catch on fire charging them. But look at that, it's, it's recovering. See, this is, this is a reason if you don't balance charge once in a while, you have no idea what's going on with your battery. 
So let's put that load back on it again and see what happens. 3.04, 2.78, 2.16. Uh oh, see, it's, it's all the way down to like 0.05. So that is a bad sell on a battery, folks. If this doesn't make sense to you, send me an email. Um, we can get together and we can talk about it. But this is the reason it's so important for you to be in the room when you're charging. You should never walk away. At a fly-in, I've got my trailer with all my electronics in it. My batteries will be parallel charging, and I might stand outside of the trailer while it's charging, but I'll never get more than 10 feet away from my, bat my LiPo batteries charging. And I'll almost guarantee you this, if you follow the practice, look at that battery come all the way up to 3.91, and it was all the way down to 0 0.05, um, that cell. So this is a reason it's so important, people, to be with your battery when you're charging it. You need to balance charge it. You need to have a good charger. You need to check your internal resistance once in a while. Um, I'll throw up over here what the internal resistance of this battery was, and it was horrible. Okay, as I said in my other video, zero to ten. Well, I mean, one to ten is an awesome. Well, is a good one is an awesome battery. Ten is still a great battery on your internal resistance. Eleven to fifteen. It's still a decent battery. It's good to fly. Uh, basically, the 16 to 20, it's getting up there in age, and above 20, it's not very good. And this had one cell at 30. And um, but look at them recover up to three point. They're all almost exactly the same voltage again. So I'm going to hit it one more time, and um, I should feel that battery just to make sure it is not doing anything. Yeah, that one cell is really hot. Yeah, that one. The rest of the battery is pretty cool, but that one cell is really hot. So I guess in theory you probably could set one of these on fire if you had an EDF. But I guess when you went to take off, when that, I mean, watch on the left hand what happens to your voltage when your voltage drop. You're playing probably. So right now, I mean, look at the voltage dropping. We're under 11. We're at 10 volts. We're at 9 volts. We're at 8 volts. So your airplane would be. Uh, taking a dive. We're going to look at the amps on that again because um, see this is the reason I do these experiments people so you guys can see what's going on with the chemistry of your battery. Um, I bought all these batteries at the same time. I've treated all these batteries except one really 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 good. This battery here I was using and testing some of the really high loads I put with some of my low KV motors and I probably exceeded the C rating. If you don't understand that, watch the video two or three before this because I, I covered C rating. But my guess is, um, so they're recovered almost to 3.9. I want to see what the watts go down to real quick. So we start off at seven, about 680 watts. We're down to 300 watts. We're down to, I mean, that battery is dying. We're down to 300 and some watts, 330. So you probably wouldn't get off the ground with this battery. My guess is you'd go full throttle, you'd get about 100 feet. As soon as you broke ground, this battery would be dying and you'd be like, what's going on? You know, it's an awesome battery. I mean, it looks like an awesome battery. Um, oh, sheesh, that is really hot to the touch now. Yeah, that's almost burning my hand. So, oh, and just so you know, all you guys that say, I always have fire extinguishers around. When I'm doing this, you've got to have some stuff around. I've got my little steel bucket there. I could throw the battery in if it burst into flames. So stop with some of the hate that, you know, I'm going to burn my house down. Um, I do like to set lipos on fire just to see what happens. And if it was a summer, we'd be setting one on fire right now. But I hope this video is helpful to you. Don't do this unless you know what you're doing. Okay. Um, be very, very careful. I, I don't know how to stress lipos are absolutely safe if you treat them right they're just like driving a car or owning a gun if you show them with respect and you know what you're talking about and doing with them and you don't abuse them like you know like i said i had over 14,600 charges and i've never had a lipo fire and you know why it's because i understand my freaking lipos okay balance charge as much as you can 
throw one of these meters on it and see if all your cells are really, really close. This is called the battery medic, I think it is, and you get it from Hobby King. So, um, and look at those cells, they're all, they're all almost recovered, 3.88 on that bad cell. So that's the reason you've got to check your internal resistance, people. Because right now, if I plug this meter on there, it would tell me the battery is, is somewhat balanced. But when I charge it, one cell gets to 4.2 and the other ones won't get there. And with my, my balance charger, it'll keep trickle charging those, trying to get them up there until it times out and shuts off. If you were not balance charging and just trying to get that up to 16.8 volts, it would catch on fire. Okay? That's the reason you've got to use the balance function as much as you can. So I hope you find this informative, everybody. And um, uh, I know the haters are going to come out. They always do. But, I mean, you know, you can't help that. Sometimes people, you know, they think the earth is flat still. So, and I don't think they do. I think they're narcissists that just want attention. They just, you know, they didn't have toys as a kid or something. I don't know what it is. Nobody truly thinks the earth is flat. So rock on. I hope you enjoy my video. If you really think this is kick-ass and you want more, like and subscribe. Um, if you don't like it, I don't know why you sat through the whole video. So rock on, everybody. I'll see you next time and stay safe.